you heard that before? And, it, and it, it's hard to find atheists and agnostics in the emergency room. You ever heard that before? I can attest to that a year that I spent being a chaplain in a hospital up in Sioux City, Iowa. I didn't find a lot of atheists and agnostics on Saturday night in the emergency room. They wanted to know about God, and they wanted to know right now. Interesting. What does it take for you to change your thinking? A crisis? A catastrophe? I mean, for the most part, everybody in this room, not everybody, but most of us, we kind of have things under control in our life, right? I mean, you know, we got the snow cleared out of the driveway, we got the light bulbs changed, you know, we, we, we got control of our life. So really, what's it going to take to change your mind? Divorce? That changes people's thinking sometimes. Or a death, death of a loved one. Or a doctor's report. Some people change their mind when they get a doctor's report. You know what I'm talking about? They change their thinking really fast, and, and then this Word of God comes alive. For some people, some people, it's, it's just a, it's new information. That's what it takes to change your thinking. You know, better than I know, what it's going to take for you. What is it going to get you to really change the way you think, and the way you understand, the way you process? Because, because as a, a, a doctor, I, I, this just popped into my head, so I haven't got the doctor's name, I'll have it next week. But he wrote a book called Change Your Mind, Change Your Life. Okay? It's like, wow, yeah, there's probably a lot of truth to that. I know how it works for me. New information. New information changes my mind. Like, um, I, I had read this before, and I think it started to affect me, but this last week, I read it again, and it was new information that really changed my thinking. And it was, it was this last week and getting ready for Ash Wednesday and for this sermon series, and I read that statistic from the 2010 census. Many of you sit around and read the census, don't you? No? Okay, just check. I was reading the statistics from the 2010 census and, and from the insurance actuaries. You all know what those are? Actuaries? And they said that the average lifespan for, of American males is 77 years old. It's 81 for women. I read that and it changed my thinking. Now I shared this on Ash Wednesday, but I share it again. I'll be, I will be 47 years old in a couple of, couple of months. That doesn't sound old, but it hit me. It hit me. I mean, I'm no math genius. That's why I, I had to go to Stephanie, our finance manager, and say, run some numbers for me, will you? I wanted to make sure I got this right. And I said to Steph, I said, you know, I know preachers count differently than most normal people, right? You know, we, we count... Uh, you know, we count differently, you know. We look at this group and say, mm, looks like about 300 to me. Now, I don't know how many are actually here. But I said to Steph, I said, uh, if you ran those numbers right, I'm for, going to be 47 years old in a couple of months, and the average lifespan is 77 years old. So it looks like I've used up about two-thirds of my life. Is that correct? And she said, yep, afraid so, Tom. What's your point? Right? <laughs> I said, just that. If I've used up two-thirds of my life, it really got me thinking about what I'm going to do with the other third. It got me thinking seriously and earnestly, seriously and earnestly about, about what I do and where I go and what kinds of things I put into my body and how I'm using my hours and my days and the weeks. See, sometimes new information will change our thinking, which will lead to changing our behavior. And I'm just sharing with you on a personal level what changed mine. You know, on one hand, you know, on the one hand, you may look at this and say, wow, you know, two-thirds is gone? Well, I better, I better hurry up and get busy. But I'll tell you what, for me, it's just the opposite. What it's done for me is it's changed my thinking. I want to slow down, and I want to savor things. I realize that I've spent most of my adult life in a hurry. Anybody else share that? I have spent most of my adult life in a hurry, rushing from one thing to the next. I, I realize that, that I've missed a great deal. Every now and then, Alana and Emily will get out a videotape from when, like, Emily was two years old or three years old, and I'll be watching it and thinking, wow, that's really cool. Where was I? Well, you were busy. Dad, husband, you were at a church meeting, or you were doing this, or you were doing that, you were going to seminary, you were leading this group, leading that group. I look at that and say, no, 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 it's not about, it's not about hurry up and do more. I've been doing that my whole life, and I'm tired of it. Yes? yes? See, I'm changing my thinking, saying, you know, I've spent a lot of my life rushing from one thing to the next, and I have lost hours and days, even weeks getting all worried and consumed about who's mad, who's upset, who's offended, who won't let go of a grudge. And I've said, I'm not wasting any more, any more of my time with that. 
You know, uh, years ago, like 10 years ago, I was spending time with Mike Slaughter out at Gingham'sburg, and Mike Slaughter was talking to me about this, and I didn't get it then. You know, Mike was talking about he was getting ready to turn 50, and he said, man, I'm almost half dead. I'm almost dead, you know. And he said, you know, I don't have any more time. I'm not going to waste any more of my time in this life with spiritual crybabies. Now, I didn't get it at the time, but let me tell you, brothers and sisters, I get it now. What Mike was saying is, we're the church, we're called to be God's people and to walk in the way of Jesus Christ and to change the world. No more wasting time worrying and fretting about who's mad, who's offended, who, who got offended because the preacher did or didn't say something a certain way and they didn't like it. I realize, I realize that if my life's two-thirds over, why should I waste it with that kind of stuff? Amen? Are you with me? See, my thinking has changed is my point. And here's the bottom line. Now listen. Here's what I've realized. I think I better be spending my time and being a whole lot more worried that God is pleased with what I'm doing and God likes what I'm doing. Amen? You with me? And I'd say the same thing for you. That's an example, a personal example, of how your thinking can get changed sometimes. And I share with you as pastor and leader of this church, just know my thinking's changed. And it's a God thing. It's not a Tom thing. It's not even a Mike Slaughter thing. It's a God thing that God like finally got through to me and said, stop being in such a hurry and try and get the big picture. I've created you. I love you. I care about you. I have a purpose. I have a plan for you. Now quit messing around doing this other stuff and get on it. That's how I hear God. Actually, it's a few stronger words than that, but I won't share those kids in here, okay? That's how I think God talks to me. Sometimes I think God talks to me in the voice of my father. Anybody else? I can't say those words, but I really do. The point is, what's it going to get to, for you to change your mind? I've shared where I am. And I haven't shared that as a way to say, aren't I something or aren't I a hero? I've shared personally with you to help you... Decide. What's it going to get you to change your thinking? What's it going to get for you to begin seeing life differently? Really, what's it going to take? It's got to be more than just me for 20 minutes standing up here talking about it. What's it going to take? New, new facts? New information? Is it going to take an incentive? Is it going to take a crisis? Is that what it's going to finally take for you to change how you think and understand? Is it going to take a catastrophe? Maybe so. In fact, God knows I don't, but I encourage you to 